Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome to another episode of Krug Smash's Short Forts, wherein we'll be exploring the new release of Dwarf Fortress. This here is version 0.44.01, also known as the Artifact release. You can have museums in your fortress now, which is pretty exciting, pedestals on which to display your artifacts. You can view the world map while you're in fortress mode now, so you get a better idea of how the world is reacting around your fortress. We have new randomly generated artifacts that are created when you make a new world, which is very exciting to me. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff too, but the biggest part of this release is the ability to send out your dwarven squads to other sites to raid them, attack them, steal their stuff, and apparently rescue prisoners too, which sounds so cool to me. I don't know what any of this entails though, really. And so in this episode, we're going to explore as much of that as we possibly can. Now then, this release just came out, and for those of you who know, a new release of Dwarf Fortress always entails a lot of bugs, so I do expect some crashing, that sort of stuff, but I guess we'll see what happens. Now, I've already played around a tiny bit, but I haven't really done that much, but for this video, we're just going to start from scratch and create a new world. Let's get into it. All right, let's see, we're gonna create a world. I'm just gonna keep everything as it is right here. Let's see how this goes. All right, making a new world, the legendary realm. Stuff is being placed down in the world as we speak. Now I have heard people say that there can be crashes during world generation and it is very common. So keep those fingers crossed, huh? All right, it's starting to slow down now. That's eh, probably good enough, huh? Okay, there we are, the legendary realm. Currently the year 120 in the age of myth. Sounds good to me. Okay, there we are, that's all finished. Back out to the main menu now. Alrighty, now we will start playing Dwarf Fortress mode. Actually first, let's take a look at Legends mode. Just a quick peek, really. Okay, and just on this category list here, uh, you can see there's actually two categories here for codices, codices, however that's pronounced, scrolls, etc. And then artifacts, that's pretty neat. Let's take a look at the artifacts tab. Oh boy, a whole bunch here. That's pretty neat. There never used to be artifacts randomly generated in the world before, so this is really cool. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, well, let's take a look at this first one here. At Luzin, the Rough Irons, a human skull totem. All right, it's a legendary human skull totem. No frills, no fripperies. Now it says in year nine, it received its name from the human Kazis Banked Murdered in order to sanctify the human Kam Hole Glossed by preserving a part of the body. What? That's interesting. Am I understanding this correctly? This artifact was made with a part of a human's body as sort of a, a memorial? Because that is just amazing. Well, then it says it was also stored in the Temple of Paddling by the human who named it. But then two years later, it was stolen from that temple by a kobold named Lru Fugakloldus. I mean, so that right there is pretty cool already. That is a story in itself just with one item. And there is a whole long list of items like this. Seeing a bunch of weird things here too, like a dwarf bone bin or Dwarf Bone Left Gauntlet. That's very odd. Well, here's another interesting one. Fashukashash, Mean Hermits. A legendary silver short sword. All craft warship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with armadillo shell. This object menaces with spikes of Garnierite. And on the item is an image of dwarves laboring in crystal glass, which relates to the foundation of a fortress named Paged Nose. Now, it looks like this thing was created by a dwarf and then given to another dwarf who may have been the Baron of Fountainwise. It says Mean Hermits was made a symbol of a Baron of Fountainwise. So that's pretty interesting. Symbol of a Baron. Does that mean it's this dwarf's personal symbol or the symbol of the fortress itself? Well, I guess we'll see. So yeah, a whole bunch of artifacts made straight off the bat, each with their own little story like that. It's very cool. But I'm gonna say that's enough of that. Let's start playing, and now we'll go to Dwarf Fortress mode. Okay, now we're gonna wanna pick a place that's near a bunch of other civilizations, just so we can interact with them while we're in Fortress mode. Hmm, you know what might be pretty cool? How about we reclaim an abandoned fortress? That seems like a neat idea. Let's see here, uh, how about this one? Lycat Kathir, the ruin of a dwarven fortress. It says it was founded in the year 18 and was destroyed in the year 27 by the Bronze Colossus Arist Whip Brave, the matched scratches. That seems interesting. I don't often reclaim old fortresses like this, but eh, what the hell, let's go for it. Reclaim. Prepare for the journey carefully. Now let's see, what are we going to want here? Um, I figure we'll kind of go for a museum fortress here. A bunch of bandits, perhaps. Maybe they'll just leave from our fortress to go steal things from surrounding sites and then bring them back here and we can display them. I figured that'll show off all the features of this new update pretty well. So with that in mind, let me just get some stuff in order real quick. Okay, our preparations are all set. Let's head out. Okay, and here we are. Our fortress's name is Lycat Kathir, Inked to Nourish. That is the original name of this fortress. We had the option to change it, but I figure we just keep that one. It's got a whole history associated with it. Why change it? And these dwarves call themselves Lycat Durad, the Inky Beard. 
and their symbol is a radiant cut gem along with two jagged arrows. I figured that seemed a little menacing. I figured if we're going to be bandits, then that's a good thing. And you can see we also brought a bunch of turkeys with us only because yesterday was Thanksgiving and I figured that'd be nice. So yeah, we have a bunch of turkeys. As far as the dwarves here, they all have fairly standard skills, except for one of them, I made a really good leader and good teacher, hoping that they could lead the military if we're going to be heading out of this place and attacking other places. Another of these dwarves is really good at smelting and, uh, okay, um, Actually, if you look over here, we have a human visiting currently. Amkash Ush Sesir, the human poet, is visiting. That's pretty interesting. Sitting over here in this dilapidated tavern area known as the, the Sugary Tooth. I kind of like that, actually. That's pretty neat. So I guess you get visitors straight off the bat like that. This place is kind of embarrassing, though. Um, Yeah, I guess we better start getting things in order. Well, first things first, we should take a look down in the lower levels of the fortress just to make sure there's no beasties lurking down there. I'm a little hesitant. It seems like it could be fairly deadly. All right, we're going to send in this guy here, Tulan. Just one dwarf. Let's see what's down there. Uh, not seeing much of anything yet. Let's continue down into the fortress. It does appear that there are some items scattered around on the floor here. I don't remember seeing that in the previous update. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna keep searching around and see if I can find anything else. Well, here's something actually. Down in one of the lower levels, I found this big room here. And down along the bottom there, you can see a bunch of display cases. This must have been some sort of a museum back in the day when this fortress was founded. We'll have to use this room to display our own artifacts. Well, let's continue downwards. Okay, and I believe this is the bottom here. That's about it. Very cool. Once we get ink to nourish in a proper order, I'm sure it's going to make a fine fortress for our dwarves. So I'm going to get right to it and I'll get back to you if anything interesting happens. Be back in a moment. All right, a fair bit of time has passed here in Inked Nourished, and if you take a look right here, you can see a couple of kobolds, skulking filth, here to steal our artifacts, I would imagine, but joke's on them because we don't have a damn thing. Yet, that is. Now, uh, I made a little military squad here. The Inky Bandits is what I've dubbed them. I'm gonna try to use this squad here to go out and steal artifacts from surrounding sites. That's the hope anyways. But first, let's deal with these kobolds. There we are, and we're gonna follow the kobolds. Here we go. And they're running. Oh, they are running back into the fortress. Being chased. Come on. Oh, they killed them. Killed both. Fantastic. Good job, bandits. Some time has passed, as I said. It's currently early autumn in that first year. Up to 13 dwarves now. We had a couple of migrants arrive. And things are looking okay in the fortress. We're starting to run low on drinks, which is a big worry. We don't have any brook or river or anything for the dwarves to drink out of. So the dwarves are currently scouring the countryside in search of edible plants. And that's going all right. We're going to survive. We're going to do fine. I'm also trying to nicen up this tavern here. Get some new tables, chairs. That's a work in progress. Oh, hey now. The merchants from Nish Zagad have arrived. That's the dwarven capital. Now, as I was saying before, our squad, the Inky Bandits, have very little skill, no armor, and only very crude weapons. Earlier, I had sent them out at some gray langers. Oh, here, one second. The expedition leader of our fortress is meeting with the outpost liaison, and it says, there is much to share, dot, dot, dot. Information added to civilizations slash world info. That's pretty interesting. That doesn't usually happen. We'll have to look into that. Now, uh, uh, as I was just saying, our squad doesn't have much skill at all. In fact, I had sent them out as some gray langer monkeys, and they did manage to kill all the monkeys, but one of my warriors was actually choked out and then killed by a monkey, which is a little ridiculous. Now, if they were just a little bit stronger, I'd consider sending them down into the fortress where we have uh, kind of a big problem. All these doors here are locked currently because down here in the fortress, we have a problem. Uh, where is he? Oh, right here. Yep, down here there's a blind cave ogre, which is just as horrible as it sounds, I'm sure. It's currently trying to rip all the doors off these rooms here. He's been doing it for quite some time. We were digging around a little bit down here and uh, we hit a cavern and it just kind of wandered in right away. So that's how he got in. But now that he's in, I'm not sure what to do about him. Let's take a look. A blind cave ogre is a large cavern dwelling humanoid monster. It has a gaping mouth with many sharp teeth. It has no eyes and only two digits on each hand and foot. Her skin is white. That looks to be a nasty customer. I mean, I know ogres are fairly deadly and the thought of this one just scares the hell out of me, honestly. I don't know, do you think if I send all my guys in, they could kill it though? I mean, really? I'm thinking they stand a fairly decent chance. Yeah, I mean, they were fairly spread out when they were fighting those monkeys. Yeah, you know, what the hell? Let's do it. We're bandits. We're foolhardy. Yeah, let's do it. Come on, bandits. I'll move them right here at the end of this hall here. All right, there's four in place here. Five. Very good. Okay, bandits. Let's kill. There we go. Okay, moving in. And they're fighting. And just like that. They killed him. Yeah, it hit one of my dwarves, but really didn't do that much at all. Not bad, fellas. 
That would have looked awful silly if all my dwarves died right there. Okay, back to the fortress here. Now I had said that information was added to the world map. Let's uh, let's take a look here. Okay, hitting C now opens up the world map. That's pretty cool. And you can look around, here's the map. Right here is the fortress, Ink to Nourish. And you could look around and see other fortresses. Wow, that is really cool actually. Like over here we have the Dwarven Hillocks of Coal Mortal, population 40, give or take. And the civilization is the Plain Handle, which is a different civilization than ours. That's very cool. Oh, and then down here, there's the Fortress of Roughness Mountains, with no civilized population. Oh my god, that is so cool. Then underneath it says Artifacts Rumored. So it is rumored that the Way with Levers is stored here. I have to imagine that's a, a book. And then down here it says Explore This Site, which creates a new mission. My god, that is so cool. I'll tell you what, we'll start off with that. It says it's a half day's travel away. And yeah, what the heck, I'm gonna send my guys there and see if we can get this book. Explore this site. Okay, Ex explore Roughness Mountains. No commanders, I'm not too sure what that means. But I can assign this squad. Okay, and it says they're on the mission to explore this fortress. Very cool. Okay, so I guess that's that. Okay, now we're back out into fortress mode. I'm curious to see what happens. Unpaused. And it looks like the dwarves are, are heading over to the right. Well, actually, up here it says uh, explore Roughness Mountains. That is their current task. That's pretty neat. Let's follow my leader. Okay, and he's heading up. And just like that, he's off the side of the map. Now, it looked to be only three. Oh, and, and it just said they returned. Okay, and on here it says they're new arrivals. Alrighty, here they come, walking back to the fortress, just like new migrants. And I'm seeing up in the top left here, there's a capital M that's yellow. That's a new addition as well. Let's see if we can figure out what that means. Alright, I just hit R to see the combat log, and now it says mission report. Explore Roughness Mountains. Let's view that report. In the early autumn of 120, the forces of the Inky Beards searched Roughness Mountains and found nothing. Huh, okay. Well, that's something. So I guess they just went out real quick, looked over the place, and didn't find squat. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's see what else I could do from that map view. All right, I'm just kind of looking around here on the world map, and up this way to the northeast, there is a tower, a necromancer tower. And if I go over it, it says the population is about 10, and the number of artifacts here is uh, overwhelming. Now, I'm thinking we should try to raid this place. I don't know if it would be a good idea, but what the heck? It's got to be a bit more interesting than that empty old fortress. Yeah, let's go for it. Raid this site. And we'll send out the Inky Bandits once more. And there they go. Good luck, guys. It should take a little bit longer. It said it's a couple days travel to get there and back. Let's hope they come back. Well, in the meantime here, it says I have a petition available. This guy here, Okta Plunge Comet, uh, a human mace man. He wants to join Ink to Nourish for the purpose of eradicating monsters. Welcome aboard, my friend. So that's pretty neat. We have a monster slayer in the fortress now. I don't know if I've ever seen one of those in fortress mode. Well, he's got some iron low boots, copper gauntlets, an iron helm, a mail shirt, bronze leggings, a copper shield, and a silver mace. Well, it certainly seems like an interesting character. He seems to be moving around slowly. I don't know if there's something wrong with him or what. Probably just working that monster slayer saunter, huh? He's heading out into the caves now. That's pretty cool. Oh, it says the inky bandits have returned. Let's take a look. Yeah, and here they come. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I have less dwarves than when they left. That can't be great. Let's have a look. Okay, okay, um, on the map here you can see this red line just spread out up to the fortress. And we're getting a whole rundown of information over on the right right now. Oh man, this is so cool, guys. And then it showed the path that they used when they came back as well. So cool. Alright, now let's take a look here. Just a moment, I'm going to try to pick out the highlights. Well, taking a look at the rundown here, and it is very interesting. It looks like three of our dwarves were killed by the necromancers there, and one other was actually imprisoned in the tower. That is so cool. God damn, I am excited about this update, guys. But the good news is we actually killed five necromancers there, which is pretty cool. Now let's head back to fortress mode. Now I'm noticing that if I open up my squad window here, it says I have three members in the Inky Bandits. But if I look at the military screen here, then it says I have two members in the squad who are currently in the fortress. So I must still be counting that dwarf who's imprisoned in the tower. Well, you know what that means. We have to get him back. But before we do, I think we should let some more time pass and hopefully we get more dwarves and some actual usable armor. We should really try to get a nicely equipped squad to send out into the world so they can actually, you know, accomplish things. Yep, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Just gonna let some more time pass, try to get some actual skill to our dwarves, and then we'll take another stab at that tower. I'll be right back. Oh jeez. 
Well, this is new. The enemy have come and are laying siege to the fortress. Very interesting. I've never seen that message before. I assume this is the necromancers that we attacked in that tower, but I'm not too sure. Uh, let's take a look. Well, okay. Nish, this guy here, is a curator. One of the dwarves we sent out to that tower. Um, but apparently he's invading our fortress now? That doesn't really seem right. Well, I'm gonna get all my dwarves in the fortress just real quick to see what we're working with here. Uh, uh oof, did he leave? I think he left. Uh, yeah, okay, yep, he left, he's not here anymore. What the hell was that? Well, I guess we'll just assume it was some sort of a bug. Either that or he escaped from the tower all by himself and has now returned to the fortress in a rage because it took so long for us to launch a rescue mission. Yeah, that makes sense. And now he's out there wandering this world seeking allies to aid in the fight against our ungrateful fortress. Yeah, that's what I prefer to think. They're not bugs, they're features, folks. Anyways, back to work, I suppose. Alright, we're back in with a new artifact, Locum Thebamlikot, the curator, which is what I've named all of my warriors, the curators of our museum fortress, has created Eturur Adilenseb, a diorite bracelet. Now, this is new here. He claims it as an heirloom in the name of the family ancestor Stodir Puldwipt. Now, I don't know what the hell that means. So I guess he made this artifact a part of his family line, if I'm understanding that correctly, to honor this ancestor of his. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's definitely new. Let's take a look at it. Boulder Run. The Walled Basis. This is a diorite bracelet. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with round diorite cabicons and encircled with bands of oval diorite cabicons and marquee cut praises. This object menaces with spikes of diorite. On the item is an image of Boulder Run. Uh, it's got an, an image of itself on it. Very interesting. Anywho, pretty cool anyways. Now I suppose it's time to figure out that whole museum thing that was added to the game. Let's take a look. All right, yes, uh, we still haven't done anything down here, but you can see our little museum area with some display cases along the southern wall. Now, before we do anything in here, I'm going to remove all these display cases and arrange them around this room in a more aesthetically pleasing fashion. This isn't going to work, but looking at them, it looks like I can hit R and make this area a museum. Well, I guess we'll see in a second anyways. All right, taking down all these display cases, carving out some new doors here, just like that, real easy. Well, it looks like someone was interrupted by a troglodyte. Never good. Yeah, and it looks like some of the bastards are running around down in the caves here. Just take care of them real quick. Here we are. Go get them, guys. Oh, and just while I'm thinking of it, the Inky Bandits have been killing all sorts of creatures down in the caves here. Like, everything that wanders onto the map. Oh, and another note. That human monster hunter who joined our fortress? He's dead. Killed by a giant bat. I, I believe it had grabbed him by his head and shook him around until he died. All right, back in the museum, and I'm placing these display cases now. Just around this area. Fairly straightforward, really. Okay, wow. Ouch. Um, you know, I constantly send my warriors out into the caves to fight monsters now, but we just killed a jabberer here, and it really screwed up the inky bandits. Ugh, that sucks. Well, anywho, we have our display cases in place now, so let's give this a try. All right, so if we go over this one here, it says set new displayed items. Okay, all right, and it actually looks like we could put any type of item on here at all, which is amazing. Wow, like anything too. Could put some potato seeds up there. Oh wow, and there's actually a little window down here that shows you exactly where that item is. That is such a cool addition. Man, that is neat. Oh, and how about this? You could actually put the corpse of some creature in one of these display cases. Oh man, that is so neat. Okay, how about this? Zidella ma'am. That's that jabberer that killed half my military. How about we cram his bloated carcass into one of these display cases? So cool. Let's do it. Oh my god, can you actually put more than one thing in a display case? That is pretty cool. I really like that. We'll just put that one carcass in there though. And on this one here, we'll put that artifact. There we go. And I'm also going to make this entire area here a museum. Just like that. Alright, and I guess now it's a museum. Very cool. I really love that addition. Alright, so that artifact just got placed in this display case here. And here's that Jabberer corpse, making its way slowly up the stairs. Oh, hey now, what's this? Intruders, drive them away. Uh, it's looking like we have a necromancer here. Is that what this is? I have to assume that this is one of the necromancers from that tower we attacked. Probably just checking our little fortress out here. Hopefully there's no others skulking around. Well, I guess I'm gonna send my bandits out at him. Oh, it looks like he brought an elk skeleton back to life. Little bastard. There we go. Okay, we got him. That's good. Now the dwarves are fighting with an elk skeleton. Oh man, it's giving him one hell of a time too. That's ridiculous. All right, so there goes the rest of the military. My God, this is ridiculous. Oi, I'll tell you. Uh, well, I guess I'm just gonna try to avoid that skeleton for now and rebuild the inky bandits. And this time, I guess I'm just not gonna fight anything. I'm gonna keep my guys nice and safe inside where they can train in peace. 
Anywho, back down to the museum here, and that Jabberer body is nice and displayed now. It'd be nice if we could get that elk skeleton in here too, but it is still alive, unfortunately. Well, hold up a second, looks like it died. Killed by a carpenter. By a carpenter. Not one of my warriors, a carpenter. Great, good. Well, some good news here, I guess is that when we embarked here, I don't think we were within the range of that tower. Like, normally those necromancers wouldn't come attack us like that, I don't think. So I have to assume that's a necromancer from that tower, which is honestly pretty cool. So now we know that places you attack will send forces back to your fortress to attack you, which I guess I could have assumed, but I'm just glad to see it in action. Anywho, yeah, gonna reform the military and try again. I'll be back in a bit. And we're back once more with an artifact. Nish Ningalath, the carpenter, has created Stukos Kesting, a tunnel tube bucket. That sounds incredibly lame. He claims it as an heirloom in the name of the family ancestor Logum Boot Fountains. So yeah, another heirloom artifact created in the name of this historical figure. Let's take a look. The Razor of Meteors. One of the coolest names I've heard, but it's a wooden bucket. This is a tunnel tube bucket. All craft or ship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of tunnel tube and yak leather. The handle is made from gray langur bone. Th that's new right there. The handle is made from gray langur bone. I don't recall ever seeing a detail like that before. Huh, very cool, I love that. And this object also menaces with spikes of black cap. Very neat. A suitable heirloom. Now I suppose we'll throw it in the museum here. You can see the elk skeleton is in here now. I've yet to see anybody actually come down here to the museum and check it out. I'm not sure why that would be. I mean, this is a museum area now, but yeah, I haven't seen a single dwarf come down here. Kind of strange. It's probably because they're too busy hanging out in our sweet tavern, the Sugary Tooth. I'll tell you, that place is hopping. Well, usually anyways. You can see there's a lot of blood and corpses and stuff here now. <laughs> I figured my dwarves are bandits and they kind of got sick of all the poets and bards hanging around the place. What the hell is this? Look at this. All these poets and bards just kind of making their way back into the tavern here. All right, this isn't going to do at all. We are a bandit fortress. We can't have poets and bards hanging around the place. Get out of here, you. There we go. Yeah, I mean, the mercenaries can hang out. That's fine. Sometimes they join us, which is cool. So we seem to have trouble uh, with a, a solid military here in Inked Nourish. You know, it's probably my fault. Sending my unskilled army out to fight every monster that appears on the map. But that's how you get a tough dwarf, damn it. Um, one would think that a poet or a bard would show up at the sugary tooth here, see all this blood and gore and dead poet bodies all over the place and be like, hmm, you know what? Maybe I won't hang out here. That's just me. Anywho, let's take a quick look at our military. I have two squads now, and they have a, a fair bit of skill on them. They're still fairly raw, but eh, whatever. Enough time has passed, I think. We have to send these guys back out into the world. I had said at the top of this thing that I want this to be a museum fortress filled with stolen artifacts, but we've yet to steal even a single artifact. Kind of embarrassing, really. Now then, are you ready, bandits? Okay, back to the world map here. Do, 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 do. Here we are, the Dwarven Tower of Shield Crux. The Dwarven Tower of Shield Crux. Hmm, interesting. Now it says war here. That must be the game telling us that we are at war with this group, this necromancer tower. And also underneath it says prisoners, Nish Grasp Plank the Dwarf. That's the guy we had lost there that first time, and who inexplicably returned very briefly, but we'll just ignore that fact. Now down here it says people, Let's hit that. And then it says Nish Grasp Plank the Dwarf, last in Shield Crux. So I guess we can hit R now to start a new mission to rescue this person. And now I have my two squads. I could put them both on this mission. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to put one squad, the Inky Bandits, on the mission of rescuing Nish. And then I will start a new mission to raid this site and put the, the Skulkers on that mission. That's my other squad. I don't know how it's going to work. But I guess we'll see. Okay, two squads heading to this tower. One to rescue, one to raid. Let's do it. Okay, and here go those dwarves heading out now. Two days travel to that tower. And hopefully everything goes all right. Good luck, fellas. And now I guess we'll just wait around. Oh, it says the Inky Bandits have returned already. Very quick. Okay, it looks like the other group still has not yet returned. Well, I guess we'll see how the rescue mission did first. Um, not too sure all right from the looks of things here they didn't even leave the fortress uh okay well th that seems a little buggy to me because last time there was that red line that went up to the tower this time it's not doing anything all righty well not too sure what to make of that so now i guess we're just waiting for the other group to return from their raid i'll tell you what nope screw that you lazy bandits get back out there we're gonna raid this tower there we go all right and they're heading back out now all right, so that might be nice. Two dwarven squads going to that tower to raid it, one hitting right after the other. Oh, those necromancers won't know what hit them. I really do not see the fascination of this tavern here. There's just blood and filth on every surface here. 
To each your own, I suppose. The Inky Bandits have returned. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, now it's working correctly. To head up to the tower. We're getting a big loadout of everything that happened there. Oh, hey, and it looks like they stole a bunch of stuff this time. It says here that they were able to slip into the tower undetected. And then it says they searched the tower. And then it says they stole a bunch of books. One, two, three, four, five, six books. And then it also says the forces of the Inky Beards freed the dwarf Nish Grasp Plank. So they freed that prisoner as well. Very cool. All right, let's head back to the fortress now. Oh, here we can see Nish returning to the fortress. I imagine he's pretty happy about that. So that is pretty cool. You can launch a mission to do something specific, or you could just put the more general raid this site option up there. And they'll go in, steal stuff, rescue people, do what has to be done. Yeah, that's pretty darn cool. Hey, but wait a second here. Where the hell's my other squad? I had sent them out to raid the site before the Inky Bandits. That's a little worrisome. Oh, it says the Skulkers have returned. And here they come. Okay, let's take a look at that mission report. All right, so they head up to the tower, just as before. And then they come back. So again, they just went up there, snuck into the place, and stole a whole load of books, and then came home. Very cool. Let's see if we got anything neat. Oh my god. Okay, so here there is a book, a codex that we got from the Necromancer Tower. A 52-page manual entitled Great Mortality. It concerns the secrets of life and death. So this is a Necromancer book, and it contains the secrets of life and death. And if a dwarf reads this book, then they can become a Necromancer, an undead creature that can raise corpses. Now for those of you who know, I just did a two-part Short Fortress series, and it involved me trying to get a Necromancer book, bringing it to a fortress, putting it down and having my dwarves read it to become Necromancers, and it was a fantastic pain in the ass, because I had to start Adventure Mode, take an adventurer out to a tower, try to steal the book, bring it back, but this actually was fairly easy. That's very interesting. I'd have to imagine if you were playing in regular Fortress Mode, you'd have to be fairly careful with this sort of a thing, because if a book like this got mixed up in your library and dwarves started reading it, they'd all become Necromancers, which, I mean, you know, if that's what you're going for, great, but if not, then, well, then you're gonna have a problem. Anywho, you know, now that I'm taking a look at this list, I noticed another neat little little tidbit here. Thilseg Gavost, Tarnish Sects, a Koboldite Earring. This earring here was not made in our fortress, and in fact one of the bards that is visiting is currently holding the thing in his hand. That's pretty cool. Let's take a look real quick. A Koboldite Earring. All craftsmanship is... All craftsmanship? Craftsmanship? That's very odd. So it must not be made by dwarves. This is a human artifact. Craftsmanship. That doesn't seem normal to say at this point, which is which is odd. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with sheep hoof and encircled with bands of goose bone. This object menaces with spikes of bobcat bone. So that's pretty neat. So I'll tell you what, bandits. We're just gonna saunter into the old sugary tooth here and, uh, you know, snag this artifact. Here we go. You can't run from us. There we go. Okay. New artifact. And I will throw it in our museum here. And... It doesn't look like that earring is showing up on this list here. That's kind of lame. I've heard that there's a problem in this game with ownership of objects. So even though that artifact is on our map, it's not considered to be ours, I don't think. And so we can't do anything with it. That kind of stinks. But now that I'm thinking of it, we can put those Necromancer books, yes, there's more than one, I realized, on these pedestals here, and I don't think dwarves will read them then. You know that whole ownership thing that I mentioned? I'm pretty sure that's the reason a lot of the stuff in this abandoned fortress here isn't being touched by the dwarves. Like this big pile of junk in the museum here, which kind of stinks, but oh well. Here come a couple dwarves with those Necromancer books. They're in a couple display cases now, and hopefully they'll be safe here. Very cool. So we did actually get some artifacts this episode. Not bad. Well, that was a fun episode, huh? Oh, and it looks like uh, the sugary tooth here has exploded into violence. <laughs> Not too sure what just happened, but it looks like a few dwarves just died. Just a little tavern brawl, I guess. The Sugary Tooth, one of the rowdiest taverns in the land. Anyways, as I was saying, this here is going to be one fantastic update, guys. The ability to leave your fortress and raid surrounding sites, that just adds an entire new level to this beautiful game. Think of the things that are going to come with that. Attacking the humans, the elves, having them attack you in turn, stealing artifacts. Oh man, that is so cool. Also, I did note that I had the option to raid dwarven sites from that world map, as long as they weren't part of my civilization. If I did that, would those dwarves attack my fortress? So many questions, really. And so many possibilities, too. It really is staggering. And I know there are a lot of you out there waiting for me to start my new series using this release here, but I'm still going to be holding off a little bit longer, just to make sure all the nastiest bugs are taken care of. I would really hate to start a new series and have a new update come out that wasn't compatible with my series save. That would screw everything up. Until then, I'm probably just going to keep doing short fortress episodes like this one here. That being said, I have no clue what I'll be doing next week, so if you have any ideas, throw them in the comments below. Well guys, I hope you had as much fun as I did exploring this new release here, and I do hope to see you again next week. But, 
Until then, you bearded bastards.